I am rabble rousing for liberty. We're in desperate straits. You got all these fake talking heads up there, the prettiest face they can get. Stick them up there like the nice girl next door, Megan Kelly. And then we get the connections done, get Tosh Plumley on there, and they turn it into 15 seconds talking about how he worked with narco operations, almost implying he's a bad guy or something. When he's been working with the Mexican Marines and Joint Task Force 6 out of Fort Bliss, Texas to stop drugs, while the black side of government, the dark side, is on record shipping them in. And so I wanted to get him on with us to talk about what happened to him because he put it out on his Facebook that we'll put up on screen for folks and I'll give him the address that this is endangering his life. And he, again, is a famous whistleblower of the church committee, if you just joined us, and then of Iran-Contra. And you ask, how is he still working government? Because there's a light side of government. He doesn't work in government. He's a private contractor. Flying into the Middle East, you name it. And he exposed that the State Department was shipping guns directly to Al-Qaeda, that they weren't just getting Libyan arms. That's what my intel has said as well. This is somebody else confirming with a high-level NATO source and another source, we'll just leave it at that, at a military base, high-level, that this is indeed what happened. Okay? And, and, and this is a famous whistleblower for folk. People don't know who... Chuck Yeager is. They don't even know who Neil Armstrong is. And I'm not comparing Tosh Plumling to that. He doesn't want to be called a hero. But he's one of the most famous whistleblowers at 76 years old, alive today. He flew arms in the 50s to Fidel Castro for the CIA when he worked for the CIA under Eisenhower. And he's also a veteran. Never talked about that. You know, Tosh, I, I know I'm ranting here. We've got about nine minutes to break and we'll let you go. So I know you're a busy guy. Uh, tell us what happened with Fox News and why you're so upset uh, and, you know, reading your Facebook post last Friday saying that this endangers your life, what they did. Do we have okay, Tosh Plumlee? Yeah, you're on. Okay, am I on there, Alex? Yes, sir. Okay, hey, thank you for having me back on. I do appreciate that. You bet. Uh, I know I know, it, uh, I know we have time restraints here, so I'll try to recap the best I can. Uh, sometime back, I have 11 questions pertaining to Ben Gossi. I won't go into those 11 questions right now. I directed those 11 questions to our elected officials that were involved in the investigation of Ben Gossett. Basically, the question was, why did U.S. weapons show up at the crime scene? How did they get there? Who authorized the shipment of the weapons to the direct commercial sales program to go into countries in the Middle East to be uh, transported by contractors, CIA uh, contractors, uh, and safe houses from Jordan? into various factions of operations in the Middle East, whether it be the Syrian rebels, factions that had infiltrated the Syrian rebels, all that to me did not matter. My question was, who did the authorization to ship the weapons with C-130s in the daughter of uh, Jordan, Turkey? In the process of that, uh, Fox News contacted me, and I thought that's what we were going to talk about. Uh, also, I thought... Uh, uh, the situation with Kiki Camarena and his death came up, uh, and uh, I knew Kiki. I'd flown Kiki, uh, and um, there was some documentation about the thing that Kiki had run into. Kiki Camarena was killed in 1985, executed. He was actually ratted out by elements within the CIA, not because he had found a marijuana farm in Carl Quintero's ranch, but because he had stumbled onto a very secret operation uh, run out of the United States, shipping weapons down to the southern front uh, in Costa Rica to uh, arm the southern front of the Iran-Contra um, operations down there. But they were also funding the communists as well. That's what's really important. Well, that's right. That was uh, for the people, the young generation that hasn't studied that, Sandinista, uh, and uh, a southern front was formed, um, and <laughs> a secret air base was uh, made down in um, Santa Elena, Costa Rica. Uh, weapons were going to Costa Rica. Drugs were coming back from that area to finance the operation of the guns going south. Two people found out about that. Uh, Kiki Camarena, DEA agent, and also a Marine colonel by the name of James Sabo out of Marine El Toro Naval Air Station. His command had run into what they thought at first was a drug running operation going through El Toro, but later turned out that he found out about the gun. This was what I thought we were going to talk about on Fox. It got up to where I explained the details behind the Kiki Camarena murder, uh, kidnapping, 
Also, his pilot was shot right in front of Kiki. Kiki was, uh, had to bury his pilot friend, and they hit Kiki over the back of the shovel and broke the shovel and drug him in the house and tortured him for two days and kept him alive. It was not over marijuana that that man was killed. It was over the fact that he had found out about the CIA thing, the Mexico CIA thing known as Operation Penetrate. That's what got Kiki Camarena killed. That's what I was trying to tell Fox News. Fox News, I thought I could trust. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not upset. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to let myself on your air get upset. I'm going to try to re relay exactly what happened. Yeah, tell people whose show you went on. What happened? All right. I uh, was, uh, was filmed for 45 minutes telling basically everything I'm telling you. And then when it aired, it was cut out. And it it lays the impression to me and other people that uh, I was the CIA pilot. No, it wasn't a CIA pilot. I was the pilot that had flown uh, Quintero, Carl, from the Buffalo rank to Guatemala so that the DFS, the Mexican police, and our authorities would not get him. So it appeared that I was a drug pilot that had run Carl Quintero out of the country, and uh, that's the way it come across. The stuff about CIA, the information about what Kiki had run into and reported back to his superiors was not uh, uh, recorded in that interview. That upset me immensely. It put me in some pretty bad uh, situation with uh, uh, people inside Mexico because of the Task Force 7 operations that had been going on since 2009 through 2013, or the early part of this year, and uh, I reacted. And uh, so I started posting on Facebook. I, to, uh, uh, I posted some very sensitive documents to confirm what I was saying, known as the Varelis file. I called it the Hector Varelis and Joe, uh, uh, Phil Jordan. They were already public on this. My information dovetail tied into those agents. And uh, that's where it was covered. Some of it was covered uh, in. Well, you now, said in your Facebook say, post that I saw that this that this endangers your life. Well, I mean, uh, I think two and two can be figured. I sure as hell not going to be going down to Mexico anytime soon. Uh, uh, two things here. Uh, I worked three years with the task force down there that was uh, training out the Marinos to go in and take out the Zeta who, by, guy, by the way, has American arms and took the American arms from my Mexico arsenal that had been shipped by the direct commercial sales to Mexico. This was a legal operation run by the State Department. The reason that Kiki Camarena came into this picture was because I said that the Benghazi situation was the same MO. The same sure, operation. so you were trying to go on about your past and then Benghazi and the info, and they just spun it and turned it into... Some total distraction was, that wasn't even accurate. I was what I was trying to do was use uh, the Kiki Camarena situation and the weapon smuggling to the southern front of the Iran country to the secret air base in Santa Elena, Costa Rica. I was trying to use that as an example that the same situation. So you're trying going to explain on. this is bigger than Iran Contra because now it's to Al Qaeda type groups, and that's a great way. But of course, they taped it and then butchered it down, and uh, I knew exactly. They, yeah. Whatever, whatever they did, and for whatever reasons, number one, uh, I was told it was going to be aired on another program that Bill, I can't pronounce his last name, uh, uh, La Genesis or, or, or whatever, and then found out it was going to be cut and, and switched over to the new Megan uh, uh, Kelly show. I don't, I don't listen to these, these people or any of them. I don't pay any attention. I, I don't need people to tell me what I did. I know what the hell I did. Uh, you know, so uh, then it gets chopped up, it lays on the floor. Uh, I claim. No, no, that's what they do. They've uh, the, no, the, look, well, look in closing. You know, yeah. In yeah, closing, we know what they do. We know what they do. We know what's going on. I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm not a, you know. Anyway, that's not important. What I well, listen, we're almost out of time. Uh, and we appreciate your courage. Anything else from the Senate Intelligence Committee? Any more threats? To shut yeah, up. Yeah, just tell me to shut this f up. That's all. <laughs> Anyway, I know we're out of time, and uh, I appreciate your uh, No, but you say you've now been threatened again. So first they said, we'll see about that now. Uh, well, 
Well, we, yeah, we'll see about that. And then uh, I'm messing with a national security matter, and it's being investigated, and I'm doing a lot of damage, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting people on spot. Hey, man, I'm on spot. I want my country back. Simple as that. I know you're out of time here. I want my country back. That's the only damn reason I'm talking to you, CBS, or anybody who wants to listen. All I'm asking, answer those damn 11 questions. No, I understand. You're tired, of, you're tired of playing games. I am, too. I'm hey, I'm tired of the double talk. We're losing our country. Get off our ass and do something about it. I hear you. We need more people, whistleblowers, to go public, like Michael Hastings said, and they blew his well, car up. Alex, where you call them whistleblowers or whatever the hell you call them, I call them American citizens. Get off our butts and demand that these people do something that we've elected. Uh, if you have to throw all the babies out with the bathwater, then let's throw them out and start all no, over. No, I hear you, Tosh. I do want to get you on the nightly news uninterrupted for 30 minutes to lay everything out in case they try to come after you or kill you or something. We appreciate your courage. God bless you. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com, and don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter.